Hello and welcome to Planet 40k. Today we're going to be reviewing the Tomb Blades from the current Necron Codex. Before we begin guys, just wanted to remind you that we've got our YouTube members area now active, where becoming a member unlocks perks such as early access videos and having your names in our credits in the outro. It's also got loyalty badges and exclusive emojis, which will be getting changed shortly to the factions that we actually cover. So that's something that you'd like to get involved in, there'll be a link in the video description and also if you're on a PC or Mac there'll be a join button next to the subscribe button below. So thank you all to our current members there and also thank you to our patrons over on our Patreon service too. So I thought we'd move into the Tomb Blades next, a fast attack option from yet another competitive area of the book. Although this unit is not so much a melee unit like the other fast attack options are, so it definitely has a place within your list if you're going for more shooty Necrons. So as for keywords of note then, they can go in any dynasty, they're a biker, tomb blades and they can fly. Now the hardcover codex actually lists them as having the core keyword. I'd always favour the hardcover and FAQs over the app, so I do believe they have the core keyword. As for their data sheet, they are power level 4 in the book, although the app does say 5 power level, so there's yet another issue with matching data there from the app. So come on GW, sort this out. That 4 power level gets you a unit of 3 models, and if you want between 4 or 6 models, it's going to cost you 8 power. And if you want a unit of 7 to 9 models, it's going to be 12 power. So effectively 4 power for every 3 models. So if you're playing points, they're 25 points a pop. And then you can obviously add on upgrades and whatnot later on on top. Which you'll go through in the weapons and upgrades section in the video. So as for their stat line then, they've got the following stat line. Movement 14 inch, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 4, toughness 5, wounds 2, attacks 1. Leadership 10 and a 4 plus save. So rapid movement there, not bad toughness and wounds either. So running into their abilities, they've got the Necron standard of living metal, regaining a lost wound at the start of the turn. We all know what that is. Reanimation protocols as well, which is not so good for models that have got more than one wound as they need to roll 5 pluses on 2 dice to stand back up. It's not as bad as some other units in the book that have got 3 wounds or more. 2 at least gives you a little bit of hope getting some back. But of course if you've got a small unit to begin with then don't get your hopes up too high. They've got command protocols which is your army wide buff each battle round. Which can only be applied to your unit if you're within 6 inches of a character. And there's a noble on the table. So they've got a unique ability. Evasion engrams which is basically a minus 1 to the enemy hit rolls that are targeting your tomb blades. So always handy that one. So right, moving on to weapons then. So they come stock with a twin gorse blaster. So let's have a look at this. This costs 5 points. It's 30 inch range, rapid fire 2, strength 5, minus 2 AP and single damage. So if their speed combined with the range of the weapon, you should be firing this every turn. Unless of course you're in combat. The rapid fire also shouldn't be an issue here. It should be giving you 4 strength 5 shots at the minus 2 AP, which is quite reliable for hunting infantry units. The damage 1 lets you down slightly but with ballistic skill 3 you can pick off a marine for each tomb blade within the unit which actually isn't bad if you've got a larger squad as well. You do have the option of trading that weapon in for a twin tesla carbine which is also 5 points. So this is 24 inch range, assault 4, strength 5, no AP and single damage and of course each hit roll of a 6 is going to score you 2 additional hits. So it's got a shorter range here, but you can fire off shots from a further range as it's an assault weapon, not a rapid fire weapon. Same strength, but no AP, which is really the killer for this weapon. Sixes do gain more hits, and you've got a good shot at rolling a six with four goes at it. This weapon is more for your lighter targets that already have a poor save, such as cultists or gaunts. So the trade-off here is getting more hits, but less AP. This edition has seen Tesla generally suffer due to the mine will be done ability not allowing you to turn fives into sixes for your Tesla weapons to go off. So I wouldn't expect to see this weapon that often. Another upgrade here that you can swap out your Gorse Blaster for is actually free. So if you don't take the Gorse Blaster you're saving five points. It's a particle beamer. It's only 18 inch range but it's assault six, strength five, zero AP, one damage. So less range, more shots and again no AP, no exploding Tesla either. I'd only really take this to save on the points, but realistically I'm going to go with the Twin Gorse Blaster every time. Especially with the current game in meta of 40k being quite heavily favoured to Space Marine chapters, so you really need that minus 2 AP. Okay, so that's the weapons. There's still a few upgrades to mention here. So firstly, any model can be equipped with the Shield Veins, which puts your armour save from a 4 plus to a 3 plus. 
and this costs you three points a model. The second upgrade is one of the following two options. So you can either have a nebloscope for three points or a shadow loom for five points, and this is per model. So the nebloscope is removing any benefits of cover for your opponent's units, and the shadow loom gives you a five plus inbun save. So you could take both the shadow loom for the inbun save and the shield veins for the better armor save, but now you're talking an additional eight points per model. And if you'd stick in that on a unit of three guys, it's going to come out at 24 points extra for the upgrades when you could just get an additional Tomb Blade for 25. So think about your options carefully there. As much as I do like Resiliency, if I can get an extra two wounded Tomb Blade model with another Gorse Blaster, then I'd rather take that. It's also going to aid your reanimation too, because at least you've got one extra model alive to have that ability to be able to actually roll the reanimation protocols. Okay, so onto dynasties that work well with Tomb Blades then. Of course, the Mephrit Dynasty that gives you a 3 inch boost to your range weapon and a minus 1 AP modifier if you shoot within half range. Really good for your Gorse Blaster, making it a th minus 3 AP, putting Marines on a 6 plus save. May as well mention here that their stratagem, Talent for Annihilation for 1 CP, makes any 6s to wound inflict a mortal wound on top of the damage to a max of 3 per phase. So a max squad will be firing 36 shots at rapid fire range with ballistic skill 3 so you could achieve this on average. The Nihilek Dynasty gives your objective secured which is very strong for a fast attack option here looking to steal objectives as early as possible. Even if you do kamikaze them it distracts your opponent and denies primary objective points which can ultimately win you the game. The Saltak Dynasty helps your rapid fire Gorse Blaster so it's allowing you to fire double shots at 18 inches rather than 15 inches which is half of the Gorse Blaster's range. It also allows you to reroll morale tests which I should mention here for the off chance that you do mess up morale with a large unit. One of my favourite stratagems in the book here is from the Saltek Code, which is Methodical Destruction, done in the shooting phase for 2 CP. So when a Saltek unit fires at a selected unit, then until the end of the phase, all other Saltek units get a plus one to hit against that selected enemy unit. So it kind of feels like the Triarch Stalker's targeting melee, but instead of re-rolling ones, it's just plus one to hit army-wide. Imagine having both, that's really dirty. So if you do go custom, Eternal Conquerors for that objective secured is probably the only one worth looking at from the Dynastic Traditions list. Then pair that either with Healthy Paranoia for that 3 inch range boost, or Isolationist which gives you a plus 1 strength if you're firing within 12 inches, which should be quite easy to do, giving you strength 6. It's only really effective against Toughness 3 or Toughness 5 units though, as against Toughness 4 you're still going to be wounded on 3s. But in all honesty, I'd probably stick the Mephrit Dynasty code on it if I'm playing a shooty list so that you can benefit from other parts of the codex such as Warlord traits and the stratagem itself. So going on to the generic stratagems, Fractal Targeting for 1 CP done in the shooting phase. So all your Tomb Blades that have the rapid fire weapons turn them all into Assault 2 weapons and also you don't suffer the minus 1 to hit for advancing and firing your weapon. Now I'm not really sure why I'd want to use this stratagem, maybe if you're running away and still want to fire two shots at a distance while advancing as well. Because if you're still in rapid fire range you're effectively losing two shots per model, which you're losing the rapid fire rule because it's now an assault weapon. Let me know what I'm missing in the comments guys because I'm not quite sure about this stratagem why it's useful other than like I said running away. Disintegration capacitors for 1 CP is a bit more useful in my opinion. Any unmodified hit rolls of a 6 with your gorse weapon will auto wound the target. So not only great for a min squad but if you've got a large squad of say 9 of these guys with 4 shots each giving you 36 shots at rapid fire range. So then on average you're going to be getting about 6 sixes. And I've already mentioned earlier the minus 2 AP can become minus 3 AP with the Mephric code so it'll be quite effective for taking models off the table. If you didn't want to pay any points for the nebloscope, then you can opt to pay 1 CP for Solar Pulse, which effectively is the same thing, it removes benefits of cover from your opponent's save. So to conclude with these guys then, they're very quick, great for stealing objective, distracting your opponent early, which is keeping your bigger threats from being picked off. It also prevents your warrior blobs from getting picked off, marching up the board and doing what they do best which is standing on objectives and shooting. Think of Tomb Blades as a little irritant that won't stop irritating until you deal with them, like a fly in your room. I think I'd prefer to have min squads, maybe two or three min squads of these guys. I know it won't help much for reanimation but I'm not relying on that anyway because they've got more than one wound. I'd rather my opponent have to focus fire on two different units and either overkill one of the units and waste a lot of firepower or make a bad choice of underkilling the unit, so let me continue to be that irritant, denying them objective points and whatnot. They also massively help for secondary, such as Lion Breaker, due to them being quite quick. So yeah, I take two squads of these, no upgrades I don't think, which would cost about 150 points total, then add the Twin Gorse Blasters on top 
which that's a good amount of gorse fire for your expenditure. I'd only really consider the Shadow Loom in Van Save if I was up against a really elite army that are carrying a lot of minus AP weapons and high damage weapons. But I wouldn't want to pump too much points into these guys, they're not going to survive the whole game. There are other options in the codex which can do what these guys can also do just without the shooting capability such as wraiths which are very resilient. In fact they do have 12 inch range weapons but obviously not 30 inch. Also scarabs are worth a look too which are also fast attack, very nimble, very hard to get line of sight of due to their flat model, very cheap too. Also I'm a big fan of the spider this edition so I think the scarabs and the spider combo would make my list over the tomb blades. But if you did really want a shooty list, then yeah, definitely go for the Tomb Blades. Lastly, the fact that they're a core unit is pretty big as it synergizes well with abilities such as mine will be done quite nicely. Other HQs can also help such as the Royal Warden getting them out of combat or even Illumina Zuaraz with his augmentation. So as for their rating, quite a tough one this. I do see a real tactical use for them, but I'm going to be giving the Tomb Blades a Planet 40k rating of 3.5 out of 5. Good amount of firepower, quick, tactical, has the core keyword. You've also got the option of a few nice upgrades there as well if needed. And they're not too overpriced either. Let me know what you guys think of the rating in the comments below. Also remember to subscribe if you're finding the channel useful. Check out our YouTube members area if you haven't already. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.